600 years ago, the expensive and painstaking art of stained glass illuminated many of the finest buildings within about a 500 mile radius of Paris. Amongst the stained glass artists of Britain, one man became prominent. He was John Thornton. Thornton was largely responsible for a new, lighter and clearer style of glass art with a brilliantly characterful brush drawing. His greatest work was the large east window of York Minster. In fact, it's the largest of all of our medieval glazed windows. But Thornton wasn't from York. He was from Coventry. In the late 14th century, Coventry was England's fourth wealthiest city. and The wealth from its fine blue cloth was invested in grand architecture. The city walls, the merchants' houses, but most conspicuously, the Church of St Michael. The steeple of St Michael survives today. It's a masterpiece of design, the tallest of all of the steeples of English medieval parish churches. In fact, St Michael's was also the largest medieval parish church by area. So large, it became a cathedral in 1918. That status lasted for only 22 years until it was cruelly bombed on the night of the 14th of November, 1940. Today, over 70 years later, those ruins are iconic and they're the centerpiece of an international movement for reconciliation. But the weathered stones are cracking and they need support. That's why the ruins of St. Michael's were placed on the 2012 World Monuments watch list. This need has fostered a partnership between World Monuments Fund and the Dean and Chapter of Coventry Cathedral. They have no assets of their own, no resources that a medieval cathedral does. We have to raise the money from scratch. We've been lucky to secure enough support to fix the worst of the cracked area, but we need much more because prevention is always better than cure. Beneath these ruins, enjoyed by the people of Coventry today, are three overlooked crypts. Two of them, are perfectly usable, beautiful spaces. They need protection, but we want to open them to the public. And there's a third crypt. It's full of rubble today and it hasn't been seen for three generations, but we want to know if we can include that in the reclaimed medieval spaces that could better serve the cathedral. We at World Monuments Fund believe that historic places must be useful and that's why we funded and commissioned a conservation management plan so the right questions and answers are put not only to the ruins but to the entire cathedral quarter of Coventry. Who uses the spaces and places now? Who could use them? How could we do it better? How can we generate funds from them so they can be looked after in the future? And what do they teach us about ourselves? How can we tell the story of the past? and make it essential for the future of this city. These great ruins once held John Thornton's early work before he was taken to York for that spectacular commission at the turn of the 15th century. And the bombed remains still hold fragments of shattered glass in the window tracery. But that glass is Victorian or even younger. Miraculously, Thornton's work was up in the clear story and it had been taken down in September 1939, a year before the bombing. These fragments give you some idea of the quality of that salvaged glass, which has been hidden for 70 years beneath the modern cathedral. We're working with the University of Lincoln and a variety of other experts and specialists to analyse the glass, to clean it, catalogue it, understand it, and then put it on public display. That work will be done in full public view in the Herbert Art Gallery, right by the cathedral. The Conservation Management Plan will tell us how we can most effectively display it and help the cathedral to perpetuate an income that supports it and improves the lot of Coventry. Because this is an overlooked medieval city, and when our work is done, it should be better appreciated by millions of people. World Monuments Fund never owns sites. We arrive at sites at risk and in need, places of overlooked beauty and historic importance and we help their custodians to compose a plan which brings economic and social benefits and cultivates care for their future so we can hand them on to future generations. We hope you'll join us in our campaign to change the face of Coventry. Every gift will help to secure this national treasure.